There will be four free response questions on the AP Precalculus exam. This question is modeled after FRQ1, which is primarily about composition, zeros, limits, and inverses. Let's pretend it's from the 2001 AP Precalculus exam. The domain of F consists of the five real numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The table defines function f for these values. The function g is given by g of x equals 0.35 x to the third power minus 3.5 x squared plus 11. A part 1. The function h is defined by h of x is equal to g of f of x. This notation means exactly the same thing as this. Find the value of h at 1 as a decimal approximation or indicate that it is not defined. Well, h at 1 means plug in 1 for x right here. So h at 1 will equal g at f at 1. Working from the inside out, what is f at 1? f at 1 is 6. So substituting 6 in for f at 1, we get g at 6. FRQ1 is calculator active, so let's use the graphing calculator to evaluate g at 6. We simply need to type this in as y1. First, I recommend resetting your calculator by hitting second plus 7, 1, 2. That's second plus seven, one, two. Fresh calculator. Now hit y equals and enter g of x right here. It should look like this. Remember, we need to evaluate g at six. We have just entered g as y1. So that means now we really need to evaluate y1 at six. Quit your way out of here by hitting second quit. To evaluate y1, we need to make y1 show up by hitting alpha trace and then enter for y1. To evaluate at 6, put 6 in parentheses next to the y1 and hit enter. Negative 39.4. That's it for a part 1. a part 2. Find all values of x for which f of x is equal to 4. Well, f of x is completely defined by this table. f of x is equal to 4 here and here. So that's at x equals 2 and x equals 5. And that's it. B part 1. Find all values of x as decimal approximations for which g of x is equal to 5, or indicate that there are no such values. We're going to use the graphing calculator to do this. We need to find the intersection point between g of x and 5. Just enter 5 as y2. We need to find the input values where g of x is equal to 5. So that will be the intersection point between g of x and the line y equals 5. Let's hit graph and see what we've got. Okay, I feel like we can see all three intersection points. Um, g of x is a cubic function, so we know that it will have at most three zeros. So this sort of n shape that we see uh, on the graph is the entire graph. Uh, I think I'm going to increase the x value by a little bit just so I have a little bit more room over here. So hit the window button. I'm going to let x max be, let's say, 15. Okay, we need to find these three intersection points. So hit second trace and choose option 5 for intersect. Move the pointer close to the first point of intersection. Um, pro tip, hit the up or down arrow key to move to the red line, which will make it easier to travel. The straight line is always easier, easier to move on. Once you are close to the first point of intersection, hit enter three times. Enter, enter, enter. 
And that's it. The input value we are looking for is negative 1.2352. The College Board will accept three decimal places. However, students will often try to round to three decimal places, and then they lose a point for rounding wrong. So don't risk that. My strong recommendation is always use four decimal places and don't try to round. So that's why we're going to put negative 1.2352. Let's go back in and find the next intersection point. Again, we must hit second, trace, and option five. I recommend hitting the up arrow to jump to the red line slide over to the next intersection point and hit enter three times. Enter, enter, enter. There it is, 1.4129. One more to go. One more time we have to hit second, trace, option five. Uh, I would switch to the red function by hitting the down arrow key and slide over to the next intersection point. Hit enter three times, enter, 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 and that's it, 9.8223. B part two, determine the end behavior of G as X increases without bound. Express your answer using the mathematical notation of a limit. As X increases without bound means the limit as X approaches positive infinity. If they had said as x decreases without bound, we would write x approaches negative infinity right now. Make sure you include g of x right here as part of your notation. So we have the limit as x approaches positive infinity of g of x equals. So when we look back at the graph, we're going to look at the right hand side to see uh, is the function increasing without bound? If so, we will put infinity. Is the function decreasing without bound? If so, we will put negative infinity. Or maybe there's an asymptote, okay? In which case we will put a number like three. G is the blue graph. I think I'm going to turn off the red graph and zoom out a tiny bit. So go back to here. I'm just gonna delete this by hitting clear. Um, we're going to hit the window button. Let, uh, let's increase the y uh, range. So um, let's make y min be negative 20. And let's let y max be, let's say, positive 20. Take a look. Okay, we can kind of see what's going on here. Just for fun, I'm going to lower the uh, lower bound of the y values even more. One more time. So y min let's go, uh, I'm going to go negative 75, make a big jump. Okay, so now we can kind of see the whole thing. We want the limit as x increases without bound, meaning as we slide to the right. The right hand side of this graph increases without bound. It goes up into the sky. That's positive infinity. And that's it for B part two. C part one, determine if an inverse function of f can be constructed for all values in the domain of f. This table represents all values in the domain of f. If any of the output values repeat, then no inverse function can be constructed. And we notice that the output value of four repeats. 2, uh, f at 2 is 4, and f at 5 is also 4. So, no inverse can be constructed. That's it for C part 1. C part 2 says give a reason for your answer based on the definition of a function and the table of values of f of x. Caution! It's not enough to say no because the output value of 4 repeats. It's not enough to say that f is not a one-to-one -one function. The AP graders are telling me that they are going to be very picky about the way you answer this question. So I'm going to give you the answer and I want you to memorize it 
and write it word for word on the AP exam. You have to say because each output value of f of x is not mapped from a unique input value. You really have to say exactly this word for word. Notice that we start by mentioning output value and then we finish by mentioning input value. You have to do it in that order. It is absolutely crucial that you say of f of x right here. If you just say because each output value is not mapped from a unique input value, you will lose this point. You have to be really specific and say because each output value of f of x. Also, you must use the word unique in your answer. So, once you put all that together, you really have to say all of this word for word because each output value of f of x is not mapped from a unique input value. But guess what? We are still not done. If you stop here, you still do not earn the point. You must include an example that illustrates what you're talking about. For example, f at 2 is equal to 4. And f at 5 is equal to 4. Now you have earned the point. Before I end this video, I want to show you what the answer would look like if an inverse could be constructed. I have changed this positive 4 to a negative 4. So now at a glance I can see that all of the output values are different. None of them repeat. Therefore, I know that an inverse can be constructed. See part 1, we say yes, an inverse of f can be constructed. However, for part C, it's not enough to say um, none of the output values repeat. It's not enough to say that f of x is a one-to-one -one function. Instead, you say because each output value of f of x is mapped from a unique input value. Notice that when the answer is yes, you don't need to give any examples or anything. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.